In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a cloud server with an RTX 5090 that you can rent for less than a dollar per hour. I use this because my local PC only has a 2060 Super, which doesn't have enough VRAN to run the best models. I don't want to shell out over $6,000 for a new PC that can run as fast as a server does. So I built a one command custom installer that you can run to make a persisting comfy UI server. It boots up quick every time since it persists in the storage volume and you won't ever have to reinstall all of your comfy UI models, Python modules, or lose your images when you turn off the pod. RunPod is a service that allows you to rent these pods, aka servers with advanced graphics cards, and note that I'm not sponsored by them. Let's go ahead and get started on this. I'll try to be as quick as I can, but not miss any steps and I'll explain it along the way. So first thing is you're gonna go to runpod.io and then you're gonna click get started. And then you're just gonna make an account. So use whatever email you want, or you can sign in with GitHub and Google. Um, I've already made an account, so I'll go show you straight to the next step. The first thing you're gonna need to do is add some funds to your account. So go to the billing tab, and then at the top, uh, the minimum amount you can put in is $10. So uh, I've just, I've already added some money to my account. So just put in $10 and click uh, either pay with card or whatever you would like to use to uh, pay with it. You can just uh, enter in that information. And then once you've added in your money in here, then you're gonna wanna set up storage. So create a new network volume. And this is gonna be like basically your hard drive. It's like a virtual hard drive. So uh, for this volume name, I'm just gonna call it image testing three and comfy UI's models take up a lot of space. So I would go ahead and make this like, you know, probably at least 50 gigs. And you can see it tells you how much it is based on how many gigs you're getting. So we'll just start with 50. We can always add more later. I live in the United States. So I am gonna pick something uh, on the East Coast. So I'll do whichever um, graphics card I want, I'm gonna find one that matches. So you can see these are not the right ones. So I'm gonna pick, what's this? Okay, so this North Carolina one is close enough to me and it's got a RTX 5090. Um, it doesn't really matter that much where you are. It'll just be a latency thing. So like, if you don't really wanna look through all these, just look through the list and find whichever one has the graphics card you want. Even if you're like in Europe, you could still use the US ones. It doesn't really matter, but I'm trying to be meticulous about it. So North Carolina is close to me on the East Coast. Uh, if I was in the West Coast, I would do like Texas or Washington or something like that and try to find one that has at least, you know, probably you probably want to use at least a 4090 for this image generation, but I like the 5090. I think it's worth just going for it. So then click create network volume. And now what we have is just this thing that stores all of our data persisting. And the reason that you need that and the reason it's different from a pod is this pod is the next thing we're gonna set up. This is what we're charged for by the hour. And you can see the different costs of the different graphics cards like this 5090 is 89 cents an hour. The 4090 is a little bit cheaper. It's 69 cents an hour. Um, and these are erased and deleted every time you turn them on or off. So you can just very quickly turn these on or off and switch whichever graphics card you want. I would strongly recommend picking one and going with it for this tutorial uh, and just making sure that you keep that the same because if you start using a bunch of different cards, you might run into issues with Comfy UI and your Python installation and all the versions. So next we're gonna make sure that our pod is using the proper volume. So we just created this thing in storage. We're gonna come here and here's the new one. So to click this drop down, image testing three. So this tells our server to use this as basically its hard drive, its storage. Its graphics card is gonna be this 5090. Uh, because I'm using a 5090, I'm gonna want PyTorch 2.8, which is an Ubuntu server, aka Linux. So uh, if you were doing the 4090, you would change that to like uh, PyTorch 2.4. But just for this tutorial, 
Uh, it's going to be PyTorch 2.8, and we're using a 5090 with the mounted network volume. So we're going to go ahead and click deploy. Okay, mine had a little bit of a lag when I clicked deploy. So if yours does, just click pods, and you'll be able to see your pod in here. So this is the new one we've just set up. So to access this one, which it says it's running, meaning we're going to get charged 90 cents an hour starting as soon as it was turned on and, in, and until it gets turned off. So make sure you don't leave these on all the time. You could just turn it off right now and terminate by clicking this. And I'll ask you if you're sure. And then that's how you turn it off and you don't get charged. But um, what's happening now is this, since it has PyTorch, it's got this Jupyter Lab, which is like a basically a way you can just kind of like interact with the server. So it's got like the kind of stuff you'd see in Windows. Like it's got folders and it's got your terminal and uh, you can, you know, run Python from here. So first things first is we're gonna need to set up the comfy UI. So what we're gonna do is within our workspace, which is our persisting storage, which is this right here, image testing three, this is what persists. Uh, even if you turn the server off, but everything else you install on this server, it's going to delete it. So that's why we have to put it on workspace. So now we're going to build out comfy UI and workspace. And, uh, now I'm just going to give you all the commands. You'll see them in the description. All you have to do is copy paste them in and I'll, I'll, I'll briefly explain what they do just so you understand what this is. I'll put this entire text in the description of this video. So all you do is just copy everything with control a and control C and then paste it into the terminal here. It'll ask you if you want to allow it to access your clipboard. So click allow and then just press enter. The script took about five or 10 minutes to run. So it's relatively quick and you'll only have to run most of the script the first time you ever do this, but you'll know it worked if you kind of scroll up and see if there was this command that says listen 000-port 8118. That's where it's uh, using Python to run main.py. Now you would think we'd be able to just go to this IP now and see it, but there's one more step. We have to go tell our server to allow that port through, which is just a security thing. So you'll go to uh, back to your pods tab, go to your pod, and then go to this little dot, dot, dot edit pod. And then we're going to add comma 8188 and click save. Every time you make changes to these ports, it's going to cause your server to restart. So after just a moment of the server restarting, you can see port 8188 showed up, which means that it knows that that's available. However, since the server did restart, uh, we're going to have to go back to Jupyter Lab, and I'll just close out of this one for a fresh start since the server restarted. Okay, so click Jupyter Lab, and then go to your terminal. And then from our file, the last command here is launch now. So anytime you start the server, this is how you launch it going forward. You don't have to run any more of this stuff because it's all already installed. So this is going to be the command you're going to want to remember. So now the server started up, you just run that and it'll start up comfy UI and everything else. It'll take about a minute or two to boot up and you'll be able to see that it's running at, uh, this port here, but instead of clicking this, what you can do is you can go back to this page and click this button here, HTTP service, which is on the new port we added 8188. And then this will launch into comfy UI. Comfy UI took about another minute to load after clicking the port link on the other page. And you can see everything's in here, which is great. So from here, you have the option to work with anything like you regularly would in comfy UI. Just to test our new setup, I've gone ahead and loaded in just the default workflow, but if this doesn't show up for you on your screen automatically after you refresh it, you can just import this default workflow that I'll save, which is literally just the same thing as here. So I'll put that in the description in case you don't have it. And then all you do is you just drag and drop it from your downloads folder, folder in here. We'll use a test workflow and You'll notice whenever you try to run something, it'll tell you that it's missing. Uh, since this is on the cloud, it doesn't have all of your files. So we'll just have to put these in and that's relatively easy to do. So this one's a checkpoint that's missing, which I can tell because it's CKPT. And uh, we'll just go to Google and try to find that file. 
So this one's on Hugging Face, and you can see the name matches. So we're gonna copy this download link, and then we'll go navigate into the folder, which is in our workspace under Comfy UI, which we installed. So we'll go to the models, and we'll go into, uh, what did it say it was? Checkpoints. And we'll open the terminal there. So uh, you can also just CD into it, just like you normally would in Linux. And then uh, we'll go ahead and tell it to wget and then paste in the link there. So you got wget, which is going to go get the file, and then it's going to go install it uh, directly onto the remote server. Now that that's complete, you can see that it's listed in the directory here. And if you refresh this page, it'll load that into the relevant folder that we just placed it in since it's in the same persistent comfy UI directory. And then from there, you can just click run and it'll take just a moment. But um, if you're curious what it's doing and you come to the tab where we ran our commands, you can see um, from the actual Python view what comfy UI is doing in the other Jupyter tab. So after just a minute, it passed its test. This is just like the default comfy UI one where it wants to make a water bottle with a galaxy and you can see it worked. And those will come into the outputs folder here. Just a few quick reminders. Anytime you set up a new server, make sure you have your proper network volume selected and not just a blank one. Uh, we're using the 5090. Also, anytime you start up the server, the command is just workspace slash start dot sh and then that'll run your comfy ui for you a third tip is just make sure you never leave your servers running you can see in the top left corner the amount of time you've got left but uh, make sure if you're not using it you just go ahead and terminate it which will kill the server but all of your information will be state saved in your network volume including anything you generate will be in that workspace directory as well just as a quick reminder, if you're wondering how once you've turned off the server, how to turn it back on again, what you do is you go to pods, make sure your volume is selected, and then pick whichever graphics card you want. I'm going to use the 4090 because today is a holiday and the 5090 isn't available. For the 4090, we're going to use PyTorch 2.4. If we were using the 5090, we would just use PyTorch 2.8 and then click deploy on demand. From there, your server is going to boot up and what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to add port 8188 in there and then just go ahead and save it. That's going to make the server restart. So then just give it a minute. After just about 30 seconds, it's booted up. So you can go click port 8888 here to go to Jupyter Lab, And then you're going to just want to take that line I gave you earlier, which is this workspace slash start sh, which is the one line command to run everything so just in a new window just open a terminal and then within the terminal paste in your workspace it'll ask you if you want to allow copy pasting after about a minute or two it will have loaded comfy ui up so you can see it tells you here by saying go to the gui instead of clicking that link just go back here and click your port that we added which is the one comfy ui is on 8188 and then it'll take you straight into a comfy UI. I hope this tutorial helped you figure out how to set up your comfy UI persisting server. It's great to just be able to use a 5090, which is an incredibly powerful graphics card uh, at any time, whenever you want to, and just get charged for what you're using. Like I said, I'm not sponsored by this company. I just don't have three grand to spend on a graphics card. So, um, and I don't really need it for a whole lot of other things. So I made this tutorial because all of the templates in here that came with RunPod just didn't work out of the box for me. And I was spending a lot of hours like just trying to configure some of their pre-done um, examples that you could use with Comfy UI. And I think that they're probably good for some people, but for me, I really wanted the customization. I, and also every time you launch one of these, it takes a while to load everything because it doesn't persist. So it deletes everything every time you restart it. So you kind of have to use the storage anyway. So I figured I might as well just put our comfy UI and all of our models and all of our uh, checkpoints and everything on one persisting server. But these are charged monthly. So uh, this one cost me about $13 a month. If I ever don't want to use it, I can just delete it 
And as long as that's off and my pod's off, I know I'm not getting charged for anything. So um, this tutorial just took quite some time to make because I had to do all these things to try to figure out how to do this from scratch. There's no tutorial online to do it. I just have a web background and um, t tried a bunch of stuff just to set up the custom build. So I hope my one run command works for you. And if you have any uh, issues with it, just post it in the comments and I'll try to get to it. And if my video helped you, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.